Hello, in this presentation we will record the receipt of inventory along with a bill within QuickBooks Online. Here we are in the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. We're going to be entering a bill and we're going to be connecting that bill to the related purchase order that we have created. So let's take a look at the plus item down here and see the activities that we have. What we're looking at is in the vendor section and what we have done so far within the vendor section is to have a purchase order. So we have the purchase order and remember that a purchase order does not actually have a transaction related to it. It's not us purchasing inventory. No inventory has increased because we have not yet got it and we actually haven't even paid for it at that point in time. It's just a request for inventory to our vendors. Once we receive the inventory from the vendors, then we're going to pay for the inventory or enter it into our system in this case and record the inventory at that point in time. Note this is a little bit different than would be something if we were purchasing something for ourselves and something such as Amazon because we typically make the payment when we make the purchase as opposed to this item where the purchaser has a bit more control when we make the purchase order in that uh, the payment has not been made at the point of purchase, we're actually going to get shipped the inventory before we enter that information into the system and then pay for it. So we're imagining here that we have the purchase order, it went out requesting inventory, in our case a guitar. It has now received, been received along with a bill. And we're going to record the bill into our system representing the fact that we now owe money for that guitar because it has now been received and record the related accounts payable that uh, is due at this point in time. So we're first going to select the bill item here and then we will pay the bill at a later point. So we're going to select the bill. We see this item here and as it is a bill that means of course that it will be increasing the accounts payable, the account representing that we owe money. And the other side then will go to what we are purchasing, what we got, in this case inventory. So we're going to put who we're purchasing from. We could select the drop down and find them or, or and or type in. In this case, it's Fender. That is the vendor Fender. And so we're going to say that is the one we want. Once we do that, then we're going to see this little pop up saying, hey, there's a purchase order 1003 related to this particular vendor. Would you like to add this information from the purchase order to the bill? And yes, we would. So this was a total of 168. That's the purchase price from the vendor. It's a Squire guitar. We're going to say that's the one and add that. Once we do, then if we scroll down, it's not going to be in the account detail. It's in the item detail. The difference between these two is that the item detail has to do with uh, the inventory. These are inventory items. In this case, an SQ Squire guitar from Fender as opposed to other types of bills which might be say the utility bill or the phone bill or the typical type of bills the uh, types of accounts we would put up here other type of accounts that were asset accounts like uh, prepaid insurance and whatnot would also be up here items typically will be the inventory items items are typically things that will have a list to it things that we're going to have to uh, record and enter some other place and then populate them here so that the items will be uh, there for us to populate with in the future. So if we could just tap through this now, we're going to say Fender. We uh, aren't going to put a mailing address at this time. The terms, we could select the terms. So probably net 30 are typical types of terms, meaning it would be due uh, within the 30 day time period. We're going to put the date of 02-14-21. That's the date uh, we're working for the month of February in this problem, and that's the date we will have. That then, 30 days later, would be uh, 316. We're not going to have a bill number or the permit number. We're going to scroll down to the accounts. Again, no accounts here. We're going to have the item down here. And that'll be it. So we got the square, we got the quantity one. The rate is coming from the fact that we entered the square. Uh, as an item, an inventory item, and that's the cost of the inventory item that uh, we are purchasing for. We have it uh, billable to uh, the customer and it's new music stuff. So we're actually going to say that it's going to be billable. And again, this isn't a perfect kind of connection. 
what this is going to say is that when we go to new music stuff, remember what this means is that the purchase order, we purchased it for a particular client and a particular customer, in this case, new music stuff. So we imagine new music stuff or someone representing them comes into the store, wants this particular guitar and SQ Squire, we don't have it or we don't have it in the color or whatever that they want. Therefore, we put in a purchase order to our vendor, which is Fender up here, prior to this, prior to the bill, and they then send this particular guitar. Now we're going to enter the bill for that particular guitar, which is populated with the purchase order. So within the purchase order, we had said that we were going to purchase this for a particular customer, not always something that will be done within a purchase order. And now that we have the bill, we're going to keep trying to track through this customer for this particular guitar that is due to this customer. Now this will link then when we create the uh, invoice. Will not be a perfect link, however, because it, it'll pull up the uh, cost here rather than what we want is the retail price. But it will provide the link for us so we can kind of uh, see that pop up and populate the invoice for us for this particular guitar. And that'll help us to remind us that this guitar is the one that they wanted. And then we can change to the to the retail price. So that's how we're going to connect these two out for now. So the customer is going to be uh, new music stuff. And we'll see that connection when we create the invoice. So what has happened now? What's going to happen when we record this? One, this is a bill. So that means that no matter what, a bill always is going to increase the accounts payable. That's what a bill means. So accounts payable is going to go up by, of course, this 168. The other side is that we purchased a guitar, which is inventory for us. So that's an asset, and the asset should go up as well. So let's go ahead and save this and see if that is what happens. Now QuickBooks is trying to sell us one of their services here. We're going to say no thanks for now and close this out. We'll go to our reports on the left side. So we're going to go to reports. We're going to type in first the balance sheet. So we'll type in balance sheet. And the dates that we are going to be looking at is going to be the month of February. So let's say 020221. We're working in the year 2021. 202821. And that's what we're going to, the month we're working in, we're going to run that report. If we scroll down, then we're going to see that the inventory item should have gone up. So here's the inventory item. If we select that item, then we see the squire here. I'm going to select that item. And here it is. Here it is. Here is our bill. We can close that back out. We can go back to our report up top, back to the balance sheet. That is, see the other side, which is a liability account. And we see the accounts payable liability right there. There's the 168. Once again, if we select that 168, we once again see the bill for the fender. If we select that item, then we will see once again the bill that we have just input. So we're going to close this back out. We're going to go back to our report up top. Notice that the two accounts affected our on the balance sheet. There's no income statement account, even though we entered the bill and we got the inventory. What happened is a liability went up and the asset went up. An income statement account will not be affected until we sell this item. Then we'll have to expense it in the form of cost of goods sold. Also note that if we went to the payable by customer, it will show this same amount by the customer who we owe, which of course in this case is Fender. So we want to select and back this up by uh, another report, a subledger, breaking this information out by vendor, which in this case is just one vendor by the name of Fender, the person we purchased our inventory item of a guitar from. We will now do this one more time. So we're going to select another bill. We're going to enter another bill for a guitar we received. Remember that we are talking here. We, had a pur we have a purchase order. Now we have the bill and then we will pay the bill at a later time. So we have received the guitars at this point and we're entering the fact that the card guitars have been received and therefore inventory is going up and that we owe payment for them because they have been received and therefore the accounts payable is going up. This is going to be for Epiphone. So we could select Epiphone from the drop down and or type in Epiphone and select that vendor. Hopefully if it's not spelled correctly, I apologize. 
And if we tap through this, we then see the purchase order related to this popping up, meaning we had that QuickBooks is telling us here. You had entered a purchase order prior to this for 1,200 purchase order 1004. Is this the purchase order you would like to use in order to populate this bill? We're going to say yes. This, of course, is an Epiphone Les Paul. That's the type of guitar that we got here. We're going to add that, and we're going to scroll down. It's not in the account detail. It's in the items because it is an inventory item. It's an ELP, an Epiphone Les Paul. We got three of them on the purchase order, $400 that being an item that we recorded as items so if we looked at our item list we would see the cost is 400 the retail is different the cost is 400 we have the amount billable this time not going to put anything there why because we didn't populate a customer this is not a guitar that we purchased from epiphone this time or these three guitars are not purchases that we said hey a customer came into our store wanted a guitar we didn't have in the store and therefore we're purchasing these guitars for that particular customer. What we did say is we said the ELP guitar, one of our more popular guitars, we want to have more of them in the store because we tend to sell them just randomly for, from people going into the store, and therefore we're just going to purchase three of them now and uh, sell them as people come into the store. So that's where this is going to pull in. There is no customer. We're not going to have it bill through at this time so note that when we have a purchase order it really depends on the type of company we have as to whether we buy something that are typically more customized for a particular customer or we buy something that first goes into the store and then people are going to purchase them in other words we don't buy them for a particular customer in mind at the point of the purchase order so that means we're not going to have any billable item in this uh, in this one <laughs> so we're going to say what happens here well remember it's a bill the bill means that the accounts payable will be going up that's what a bill is it means we owe money for this in the future and the other side will then be the inventory is going up because it's an item now remember if we had a bill that was just a bill that we record the phone bill or the utilities bill the accounts payable would still go up but the other side would be some type of expense or some other type of asset in this case it's inventory specifically because it's an item that we're buying in this case a guitar which is an inventory item for us it's something that we are purchasing and then we'll be reselling so we're going to say save on this and check our financials one more time and the system actually saved me here because we didn't do an important thing i didn't do an important thing and that's going to be tabbing through this i should select the terms i'm going to say the terms are net uh, 30 once again and the dates we're working in the future here, so remember, so I have to go back in here to 02, 14, 2, 1. If we're working real time, we wouldn't have to do that, but this is the date we're going through here. I do recommend tapping through these as you go, uh, just to, to make sure that we hit all the cells, as I didn't do this time. When we select the purchase order, I often want to go down there and see if it's populated as the first thing. But then it's, it's a good idea to always go back up to the top and make sure we tab through this here as I wanted to demonstrate by not doing that and then and then showing the problem, of course. And then here's the 214, the date, and the end date would be 30 days later because we selected net 30. If we keep tabbing through this, I think we have everything we need at this point. And so we will then scroll down and let's save this item. Then we'll go to the reports and we'll see if it does what we expect it to do. So let's close this out. We already have the balance sheet open. If you don't have the balance sheet open, go to reports, type in balance sheet, and then change the dates to the dates we are working on. 02022120022821, February 1st, February should be 1st, oh, second, 0202, it's, it's going to be the same, but February 1st, 2021 to February 28th, we will run that report. And then we're going to say that if we scroll down, inventory item, that is what we purchased. If we select that inventory item, we will see the bill that we have here. Here's the second bill we had, Epiphone Les Paul. If we select that item, we will then see our bill that we had input here. And there it is. Closing that back out, going back to our report up top. That's the first half that we have, inventory. Second half we have is the accounts payable. So here is accounts payable. If we select that item, then we see the fender, the second item there. Selecting the second item for the uh, vent. Oh, actually, that's fender. I'm going to close that back out. <laughs> we actually want 
the epiphone that's the one we just put this time that's the 1200 so if we select that item there's what we just purchased right there notice once again nothing's happened to the profit and loss i'm going to close this back out back to the report both the accounts are balance sheet accounts we haven't done anything for profit and loss liability went up because we bought something kind of on credit kind of like on a credit card we owe something for it other side assets went up because we got inventory nothing happens to the income statement until we sell the inventory and get revenue sales going up revenue going up and sell the guitar meaning the cost of goods sold will go up bringing net income down by the cost of goods sold once we make that sale